All right, this video is for total 100% coding noobs. If you've never really coded anything, this is going to be a great place to start. And we're calling this how to code in Pico 8. All right, very first thing we need to know is when you code something, you do it in an environment like this, some kind of text editor. And there are a whole bunch of different kinds of text editors, but they all basically recognize the language that you're using and they will color code your various words and things based on that language that's called markup. And so when I wrote this how to code in Pico 8, this in is pink because that's a special command and eight is pink because that's a number. Everything else is white because it doesn't necessarily recognize what it is. Doesn't mean it won't work. It just doesn't mean it's like something special. And anytime that you write something in a code editor, you have to make sure that it's written right or else it's going to throw an error. So if I were to run this, hit control R, we're going to get a error. It's going to try to run this as a program and it won't know how to do it because what we wrote in the editor doesn't actually make any sense. So if we do want to write a note to ourselves in any language, there's going to be some way to comment. That just is some text in your editor that it doesn't try to run as code. It's just kind of a note for you. Pico 8 uses a language called Lua, which is a pretty simple language that uses a lot of just English words instead of symbols. But to make a comment in Lua, you type minus minus. And now everything turns gray. That's to let you know that that's a comment. Now, if we run this, it's not going to do anything. This error that we see is actually from before. This new line by the caret, nothing's happening. Okay. So this officially does nothing so far. So if you want to have Pico 8 do something, you're going to have to tell it what to do and when to do it. The way that you tell a program to run something is by using its callbacks. And every programming environment are going to have kind of these built in special callbacks. These are just events that Pico is going to expect to happen. And what we need to do is tell it what to do when those events happen. Okay. The first one is init. And here's how we type that. We type function like this underscore I N I T and then two parentheses. And then after that, we type end. So this is how you write a function in Pico. So a function is just a bunch of code that runs at a specific time. Basically when this part right here is called by the program, this init function is built in and Pico will automatically call that when a program is run. So we'll just comment this in runs at the start. Okay. And we essentially need three functions to actually make a game in Pico. So one is init, the other one is update, and the last one is draw. Update runs every frame 30 times per second, and draw runs after each update. So basically what happens is Pico says, okay, run the init code and it runs all of this. And then after that, it says, okay, run update and run draw, run update, run draw, run update, run draw. And it runs update and draw 30 times a second. This is also what you'd probably call your main game loop. So it's like the start and then these to run on repeat for your entire game. So that's really how you make anything happen. Generally, the code that you put under update will do things like see if you're pressing a button, it will update numbers, names to things, all of that kind of stuff. And then with that new knowledge, you can draw something to the frame. That means update the screen. So if you have a character moving here in init, you might say this is a character named Bob. And then for update, you might say if pressing right arrow, move Bob. And then under draw, draw Bob where he is now. So at the start of the game, we'll set up our character named Bob. And for every frame, we're going to figure out where Bob is supposed to be. If we're pressing the right button on the keyboard, we're going to move Bob to the right maybe. And then for draw, we're going to draw Bob in his new place. And that's essentially how it works. So let's talk about a couple things with this code. Again, for each of these events that happen, it needs to start with function space, the name of the event, and then the code that happens is in between this function line and end. If you don't put this end here, you're going to get an error. You'll also notice that these function names, there is a underscore, and this is there just to remind us that these are the built in kind of basic functions for Pico. You don't have to have an underscore for every function that you write because there are custom functions you can write, but init update and draw as they're built into Pico 8, they do have to have this underscore. Every function in the world is going to have these two parentheses. This does a couple things. This one reminds everybody that this is the name of a function. And two, you can put special things inside of these 
parentheses when you're writing your own functions or when you're using some of the other kind of built-in functions to kind of change how this function runs. So you might, for instance, write a custom function called move. We just write function move and you have the two parentheses here. You might do something like put a variable in here. A variable is just a word or a letter that holds some information. You might put a variable in here that this function is going to use. So when we call move, we're going to tell it what character to move. And we might say character dot x equals 10. And if we set this up right, that would make our character move on the x position to 10. Now, how do we call a function? Because this function here isn't going to happen automatically where these do. Draw, init, update, and draw. What we have to do is tell Pico when to do this custom function. And so maybe during update, we could just say move, and then let's say player here. And again, we would have to set up this variable, but we could tell it to move something called player. And then when it calls this function, it's going to say move the player, and then the player is going to be this character and it will run its code. If you don't quite understand that, it's okay. What we really need to know is that there's some code that lives inside of a function and you kind of define what this function does, what its job is, and then you actually tell Pico to do that function like this. You just write the name of the function with the two parentheses like that. You'll also notice that been putting a little space before things. This is a good idea if you have something inside of a function to hit space or tab to move it over one character, because then it's a little bit easier to see if your code is inside of a function, especially when things get really long and crazy. It's really nice to have these kind of organized. You might also do something like have an if statement. So if something, then some code. And it helps to space things out a little bit like that. And it helps to make sure that these are kind of tabbed over. So the if is inside of the function, any code that happens is inside of the if. And so that's over one more. So speaking of this if statement, if checks if something is true, whatever it's checking is true goes right here. So this could be if one is less than eight, then some code. Every frame, it's going to run update and we're going to run the move function. And then we're going to check and see if one is less than eight, which of course it always is in this case. So we're always going to run this code 30 times a second. And again, don't forget to put the end here for our if and then the end for our update. One thing I like to do is comment what this end is about, just to remind myself, because when you get 17 ends at the end of a function, you want to make sure that things are tabbed over nicely and they're also labeled. That's what I always do. Now, Pico is not going to care if you have these tabbed over or not. This would totally work just fine. It's just for organizing. Some languages do care if you have this tabbed over, but not Lua. Okay, let's get rid of this stuff. Let me get rid of my move function. That's basically how the code works in Pico. Let's actually write something real quick. So inside of the init function, let's make a variable and we'll call this position X. So pause X equals, that means that we're setting a value and let's say 63, position X equals 63. All we've done is make up this word and say it equals 63. Anytime you see this word, you should replace it with 63, okay? Now, during update, let's say position X equals position X plus one. So every frame, it's gonna start at 63 for the first frame, and then it's going to add one each frame. So it's gonna be 63, then 64, then 65, and so on. So we can see this, we need to do a couple things in the draw function. The first thing we need to do is clear the screen, CLS and then two parentheses. You'll see this is green. That's because this is a built-in command that Pico recognizes. This is essentially a function, but it's kind of a built-in thing that's sort of behind the scenes. So clear the screen. And now we're going to draw a pixel on the screen with a command that goes PSET for a P set, pixel set, and that has parentheses too. And for this to work, we need to give it a couple of pieces of information. Anything that we write inside of these parentheses are called arguments. And the arguments that P set wants is an X position, a Y position, and a color, because that's the minimum amount of information it needs to draw a pixel on the screen. So let's say, our X position is 30, and then we do a comma for the next thing, and then our Y position would be 30, we'll do a comma, and then the color, let's pick color 10, which is a yellow. I know that because if I go over here to this upper tab and I switch to our sprite editor and mouse over these colors, it shows me at the bottom what the number for the color is. So we'll say color 10. And now if we save this and hit control R to run, that's going to draw a pixel on the screen, 30 pixels to the right and 30 pixels down. So we actually have something being drawn to the screen that we programmed. That's pretty cool. So now instead of this X position, let's put this position X variable POS X 
and see what happens. Save, run, see it kind of moves off the screen. I'll run this again. And so now we have this animation because every frame we're adding one to this position X and that position X is telling this pixel where to be. Pretty cool. Now let's only do this if we're hitting the right arrow. And we do that with an if statement, if button, and I'm gonna say shift R, that's going to type a right arrow emoji inside of these parentheses. Then we do this position X and then end. So this is checking if this is true. And what happens is if we say button and then whatever button we want to check, if we're pressing it down, this is going to turn into true. If we're not pressing it down, it'll turn it into false. So if this is true, then we move it to the right. So let's see what happens. Save, run. We have our pixel in the middle. And if I hit right on the keyboard, it moves that pixel over. So that's how we get basic interaction for our game. We could also do something like else if button shift L for left, then position X equals position X minus one. And now this will check if we're pushing the right button, do this. If we're not pushing the right button and we're pushing the left button, then move to the left, save, run. So now we can move this back and forth with our arrow keys. Pretty cool. So yeah, that's a basic super beginner's guide to how to code in Pico 8. I do have a lot more Pico 8 videos on this channel. If you haven't checked those out yet, definitely recommend checking out the crash course, which I'll put right here. And I hope this gets you started on coding in Pico 8. This is such a fun engine, really fun to make little games. If you watched all the way this far, why don't you give me a like and maybe subscribe too. That'd be, that'd be nice because then we can hang out some more. I like hanging out. Do you like hanging out? Do you like moving pixels back and forth on the screen? Well, why don't you subscribe to my channel and we'll move pixels back and forth on the screen? Yeah.